Hi guys, welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. So this is going to be a sort of a follow-up tutorial to one of my previous ones where I um, showed you guys how to do a open and uh, close to animation like this. But some of you had hard time following that tutorial, so I'm gonna uh, go in detail on this one uh, just a bit more, so to make it clearer. And some of you needed to modify the same script to work with like drawers like this. Um, which I didn't explain how to do on the previous one. I'm gonna do it on this one. And some of you needed to move the, the, the animation and scale it and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this, which this small door is in fact the same as the big door here. I just copied the game object, I've just duplicated the game object and scaled down the door. Uh, apart from those, addressing those, those issues, I'm gonna also show you how to like do callback, like automated callback thing. Like if you click on the door, just do nothing. Uh, after some time, it just close its, uh, itself. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that, and I'm going to also show you how to like if you walk near a door without just clicking on it, it just opens uh, and closes if you walk away, and things like that. And also you can apply the same um, mechanics or same way of doing things to open and close windows as well. So uh, this is only using like handful of scripts, and uh, um, and it's going to be fun. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, let's create a cube and then scale it up a bit. Okay, something like this. Now let's create a directional light so we see what's going on. Now if I select the cube and try to rotate it like this, um, this is sort of not the animation that we're looking for because this is not how a door animates. Uh, the reason this happens is because uh, this cube is rotating around its center, which is this point right here, which is the pivot point of the cube. Uh, but that's not what we need actually. We need this center point, this point, to be on the on one of the sides of the cube, um, so that it will animate around the, that point instead of the the point uh, in the middle. So how do you emulate that is if you create a empty game object and move it to the edge of the cube um, to something like this. And if you if I just rename this uh, game object to be pivot and if I drag the cube inside the pivot uh, so that the pivot is the parent the cube is the child now if I select the pivot game object and if I rotate it, it animates like the it rotates like this. The the reason being so this is ideal for a do animation. So why this happens is when when I apply a rotation to the pivot, which is the parent object, so if I apply a rotation, it gets applied that rotation gets applied to all the, the children under it. So the cube uh, get gets applied that rotation as well. But as you can see, the cube doesn't rotate around its center point. It uh, it rotates around the the parent objects, the pivot game objects center point. So that's why we get this kind of a this kind of behavior. So okay. So uh, what we need to do is just save the scene. Let's call folder called scenes and then let's call this main scene. Um, if I create a folder called scripts, C sharp um, script called input handler. Okay, there you go. Now, if I just create a empty game object, call that input handler, and then drag the script onto there. Let's go into the input handler script and in handle the input. Okay, so we don't need this. Um, start with it. So uh, in here, if I just check for input dot um, mouse button zero, you can quickly um, get the mouse button click something similar to this. So if I play the scene now, watch the console right here. Uh, so if I click anywhere, it's gonna say click. So that's cool. Now if I go back to the input handler script and we need to um, get a raycast 
not do a recast. So the way you do it is um, camera dot main camera screen point array uh, input dot mouse button sorry mouse mouse position and we uh, we need a recast it as well. Um, and the way you do this is physics stuff recast. I'll explain what's going on in here in a bit. So, uh, ray dot origin, ray dot direction, um, and out hit not f dot infinity. Okay, let's move this debug cloud down. Oh, right. If you guys didn't know how to how to do that, like uh, in Mono Develop, you can just uh, uh, select line and press alt uh, and up or down uh, arrow keys to move the line up or down uh, in the source code which is really, uh, really cool so what's happening here is if you if you click the mouse down uh, it's gonna uh, create a recast from the screen position of the mouse click and it's gonna cast a ray into the scene and if it hits any collider this statement is gonna be true and this debug block is gonna print so now if I run this and if I click anywhere else you can see like the blue area it's not gonna say anything but if I click on the door it's gonna say hit okay uh, one other thing we need to do we need to uh, click on the cube here and then just delete the box collider and uh, on the pivot um, uh, game object we need to add a box collider uh, and as you can see uh, if I go to the wireframe, the box collider for the pivot is this. Uh, I'm just gonna move it uh, and scale it so that the box collider covers the the mesh of the door. Why I did this uh, is because uh, we're gonna have our uh, animations of the door uh, on the pivot game object itself. So uh, we're gonna animate the door from this this game object and we're gonna check for collisions from that hit uh, raycast um, from that game object as well so it doesn't make sense to have uh, a box collider here uh, giving callbacks we need it here okay so that's done so if I just create a, another script called interactive object like this and if I go in there okay um, I can just first of all just create a public method called trigger interaction sorry there you go and if I just type something like this if I go to input handler um, and then we do this interactive object let's do this and I'm just gonna get the hit collider get component interactive object okay if that object exists that means if we hit a uh, collider Game, if, I, if we hit a game object with, a, this, with this component in it, um, we're going to call the trigger interaction method. Uh, okay, so if I just track that interactive object onto the pivot game object, so that it's, um, it's like this now, it has a box collider and the interactive object on the pivot. Now, if I run this scene and if I Okay, if I click anywhere else, it's not going to say anything, but if I click here, it's going to say interactive object because it's colliding with this uh, pivot's box collider and it's calling, it's finding that game object has an uh, interactive object, uh, which is this one, uh, and then it uh, calls this trigger interaction. So, all we need to do is um, do something with that interaction. So, if I go to window and animation I can get the animation window and if you select the pivot game object uh, 
um, and uh, do create new clip from here. You can create a animation for the door. So let me just call this open. So as you can see, since uh, this this game object didn't have a animation component, it got added automatically. So if you select the rotation key on the pivot game object in the animation window, and if you set uh, two keys on zero and point three, like this, and if you uh, set the rotation value to minus forty on the point three key, it's going to do this. As as you can see, this is very important. If you want, you have only you have to only select the rotation, uh, not on, uh, not the uh, not the others. Now I'll explain why. Um, okay, so close animation as well. Again, only selecting the rotation and just setting two keys. Okay. Hold. Okay. So. So that's that's done. So as you can see, this is the closing animation and the opening animation is this. Okay, cool. So since we didn't do select the transform like this and set the keys, um, only the rotation values are animated. From you can see from the the colors that shows here, uh, this will come in handy in a while. So uh, if I just take out the play automatic click key here. If I go to interactive object, and if I uh, if I set something like this, if I do a public enum the interactive state, okay, so it's gonna have two states, something like this, one for open and one for close. Um, and it's gonna have a private uh, interactive state variable and on void start um, I'm gonna set that state variable to be inactive and on the trigger interaction I'm gonna have a switch statement um, which is gonna switch through the M state. Um, so let me just do the two cases here. Okay. Inactive. Sorry. There you go. Break in here. Break in here. Okay. So um, if this is the open state that we can't play in. I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to play close and set the state to inactive. Uh, if the close state that we are in, I'm going to uh, do the, the inverse of that. So I'm going to press open and active. And we need to check if the um, animation is not playing, then only we do uh, this check. Okay, so now if you run the scene, if you just click anywhere else, it does nothing, and if you click on this, it does that this. But the advantage of just animating the rotation is if you click the pivot and if you move it. So if you scale it, it's still gonna work. Right? See? So in my earlier tutorial this didn't work, but here it did. It does actually. So why it does work is because we only animated the rotation values and not the position and the scale. But if you do this, it's gonna set the whole um, it's gonna set the values for all position, rotation and scale. Okay, I um, think since we are running out of time, I'm gonna continue this on the next um, video. Okay, okay, take care.